everybody. How you doing? It is January. It's the end of January. It's freezing. This is Leslie from Leslie's Creative Studio and welcome to my creative year 2019 for the month of January. Our prompt for January is nature. So I have a page that I would like to do that I'd like to share with y'all. So, um, let me get all of my stuff together and uh, get my page prepped. I'm going to throw some gesso on it. And I think I'm going to throw a layer of some buttermilk paint down just as a base so that um, my page isn't white. I don't like starting with a white page. But anyway, let me get that done. I'm sure you'd really love to watch that. So anyway, it's such a easy peasy thing. I'm just going to go ahead and get that started and then I'll bring you all on back and we'll talk a little bit and we'll get on with the process. So let's get going. See you in a minute. Hey y'all, I just wanted to show you um, before I started um, putting my gesso down on here, I just wanted to let you know a couple of things before I started. Um, I use Art Guard on my hands. Um, it's a barrier cream, and that's probably too much, but that's all right. I'd rather have too much than not enough. But what it does is it acts, imagine that, as a barrier. But the one thing I find, especially this time of year, um, I my hands get really, really dry. And when you're working um, with mixed media products, um, whether it's uh, acrylic paint, gesso, um, just anything that, any kind of um, acrylic, I guess, it really tears my hands up. So I really like to have a barrier cream on, and that will help to protect my hands because I always end up with paint everywhere. I think I get as much paint on me as I do on my paper. Let's wipe that off a little bit. And the other thing I wanted to show you is I'm gonna use my homemade gesso and I will um, put the link for the gesso, the homemade gesso in the description below. So make sure you click, you know, see more. Um, click on that and it'll open up a whole slew of things. But I'll, I will include the link to the video on the homemade gesso, but the only difference is, is that instead of using baby powder, um, and it's cornstarch baby powder, it's not the talc, um, I use marble dust and I sift it. I have a sifter that I use specifically for my marble dust and I get it at um, a company called Dick Blick Art Supplies. And I'll also link that down there. Um, I like my gesso really, really thick. So the recipe that's on there is probably a little bit thinner. <laughs> Put cream on your hands and then try and open gesso. That's smart. But anyway, so as you can see, I like my gesso really thick. So it's very, see, it's very, very thick. Um, but you know what? It works just the same as any other gesso and costs me much less if that's proper English. I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to get to gessoing this page, dry it, and then I'm going to throw on some, um, I believe it's called buttercream, uh, paint by Deco Art. I'm going to throw that on there so my page isn't white and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back with just all sorts of little tips for you. Well, you know, and I'm I'm doing that because we may have some newbies out there that don't know that don't know all the tricks of the trade. Um, when I'm done with my gesso, I am just number one. Baby wipes are a must. Um, I don't think you can ever have too many baby wipes, but I'm just kind of wiping this off here. Wiping the edge off so that my lid won't stick when I put my lid back on. 
So while this is drying, and I'm going to take my heat tool, heat tool to it as well. Um, and you know what? It's just a recollections heat tool. Um, backwards. I got it at Michael's with a coupon. Um, so you don't need to spend a lot of money and use your coupons. That's what they're there for. But anyway, so I'm just going to go ahead and seal this up. Just give it another shake. And it's all ready for my next project. I just set it up here. But yes, baby wipes, baby wipes. Um, I get the cheap ones that are for sensitive skin. They don't have alcohol. They don't have um, anything extra added to it. Fragrance free. Um, works the best. And they're the cheapest. So, and yes, I waste them. I go through a lot of them. Um, they're cheap and easy. So, all right, I'm going to get to drying this. And, um, oh, also, I know what else I wanted to tell you. Okay. This here, I know it looks really dirty. It's just because I have my brush in here. This is um, just a glass container that I bought or got, who knows where. But the water in here, it's just plain tap water with um, some Murphy's oil soap in it. And I find that it cleans my brushes really good. Um, so, yeah, I just... I'm, what I think I'm going to do is put a scrubby in the bottom of there so I can kind of like scrub my paintbrushes. Not scrub them hard, but, you know, just give them a good. But anyway, I usually just keep this off to the side over here. So if you see me reaching for something, that's usually what I'm reaching for. But anyway, just wanted to give you some tricks to the trade. Um, I learned that one from Gina Aarons. Um, is Murphy's Oil Soap is an artist's best friend. All right. I'm going to get to drying and getting some more paint on here. I'll be back. Okay. We're going to layer some paint on here. And I want to start with a lighter pink. I'm going to use two different colors, my lighter and my a light, lighter pink and a darker pink. Not too much difference in color, but just enough that it'll, it'll show look a little different. This one is cherry blossom. So what I'm going to do, put some on my palette, which is just an old piece of packaging. And I have a little cup of water here. Boy, I'm trying to think. Do I want to use my mini mister? I do. See this little mini mister thing? Oh, and it's already full of water. Perfect. Perfect. Take the cap off of it. Give it a little shake in my trash to make sure it's working. Yep. All right, now this is what I want to do. Let me get this up here like this. And I'm just going to put this on here like that. See, it's already trying to drip, and I don't even even have it all the way. You see how that's dripping like that? You see that? And I'm going to skirt it with some of my water. Paint's a little thick, maybe. Let's see some clumpage.
this and pick up some of the watery stuff down here. I'm spraying myself. There we go. See how it's whoa. Down again. There. I love it. Some more up here. Okay, I'm gonna give that a quick dry and I'll be back. Okay, now I'm going to add the pretty in pink or believe pink. And this is deco art as well. Americana deco art craft paint. A little smidge of that down there. And I think before I even put it on the paper, I'm going to water it down. Excuse my dog barking. That seems to be what she does best. You know, I also, you know, not only do I keep this bucket over here to clean my paintbrush, I also have rags. And you know, you can get these like a bundle of 12 for like a couple bucks at Walmart. They're great for drying your brushes off. And just plain old mess making, which I'm really good at. Now, it doesn't look very pink here, but trust me, it's really, really pink. And I'm just going to do the same thing here that I did before. And it's already trying to run. And I'm just going to give it a little spritz. All right, whoa. I don't want this to run quite as far down as the other one. I may not have a choice. I'm just trying to get it to go all wibbly wobbly, if that's a term. All right, so sorry about that. Okay, so I like that. I don't know if you can tell it's a little bit more, the pink is a little bit darker at the top than the rest of the pink. I'm going to go ahead and give this a dry and get the dog hair out of there because you know, she's got to leave her mark everywhere. Silly dog of mine. All right, let me give this a dry and we'll be back. Okay, so this is nice and dry. Um, it took a little bit because boy, I really soaked this up good, but I just love the way the drips are on that. And just a little um, hint for you guys, especially when you get it really waterlogged like this was, um, once you get this pretty well set, you can flip it over and dry from the back as well because, you know, this is watercolor paper and I think it's um, 140 pound. And so it, it holds the water pretty well, fairly well, but, you know, 
it's just good to get it on both sides because then you're drying it, you know, from the underneath as well as on top. That way I'm really making sure that my paper is getting good and dry. So I have that done. All right, now I'm going to bring in this stamp here and I'm going to use my stays on in Timber Brown. And I really have no idea where I got this stamp from. I have four binders, like three inch binders that are full of stamps. I have no idea where most of them came from. Uh, but I do enjoy them and I'm just going to do some stamping just to get some um, random texture here. And I do like to take my ink to the stamp instead of my stamp to the ink because this way I know that it's covering. There we go. Alrighty, uh, let's do a little bit more down here. I think I like that. All right. So I'll go ahead and put this on here. And yes, I do store my stamps upside down. So that way the ink is closer to the top. And then I'm just going to wipe that off. Not that it really matters. This, this stamp is pretty dirty. But, all right, so I'll put that up. And yep. I'm going to heat this up to set it. I'll be right back. Okay, now, as you can tell, this is really pretty pink up here, or at least it, the camera is not picking it up, but you can see that the, um, the stamping that I did is really standing out to me. I mean, it's really like popping up off that page, and I want it to be a little bit more subtle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush that I've cleaned. Like I said, these things come in handy. Pick them up at Walmart for next to nothing. I'm gonna take my gesso and I'm just gonna take a smidge and I'm gonna put it on my plate. this back and I'm going to rinse my brush again because I don't want a lot on there and I actually I could spray but I have a little container of water here you know when you go out to restaurants and you get to go things they give you salad dressing and these little things yeah wash those out and keep them they're great. They're great for mixing paint in if you just need a little something. All right, I'm just going to take some paint or some walk. Jeez Louise. My headset. All right. If I didn't tell you before, I took some, a um, little bit of gesso and put it on here. I have some water in this little dish. I've cleaned my brush. My stamping is standing out to me too much. This is just a little too pink for my liking. So we're going to set that back in the background just a little bit. So I'm going to put my brush in the water and I'm going to dilute this gesso that I had. And I really want it diluted. I don't want it real just enough that I'm going to kind of whitewash this a little bit. 
just to kind of put it back in the background. And I think I might want a little more gesso on there. All right. Okay, and that's one of the joys of having gesso that's really thick because you can thin it out and it really does a great job of just throwing things, dulling it down a little bit, throwing it into the background a little bit more so it's not quite so in your face. There's nothing wrong with that. I think that's a little bit better. Mm. We'll play with it a little bit more. Until I get it just where I like it. I think that's much better. Yes, that's much better. That way you can still see the texture of the stamp. But it's not quite so in your face. There we go. And I might just go over just those pieces because I do love them. I really do, but I just don't want them quite so in my face. There we go. Okay, let me give that a quick dry and we'll be right back. And of course, now that I've dried that, I see a little too much white on here. So I've taken some of my buttermilk and I have put it on my, on my palette. Now, just to let you know, this is all part of mixed media. It's all about the layers until you get the look that you want. Okay, I rinsed my brush off. And I'm going to get that there. Now I'm just going to go over this lightly. Just to kind of bring some of that beige back in. It was a little too white for me. I'm liking that. I think that looks pretty cool. Part of the reason why I want to do that is because some of the elements that I'm bringing onto the page are um, in the brown family. I have um, done some distress on some pieces and I don't want the white to be quite so white. Okay. There we go. That looks pretty good. All right. I'm going to dry this up and I'll be back. All right. So I've done that. I'm going to remove my... Um, palette. I'm going to set this aside for just a second. Pretty dry. Yep. I'm going to bring in another element. This is a butterfly that I cut out on my Cricut and I glued it down on some um, book text. I think it's a dictionary. And then I dry brushed it with 
um, the honey brown. And I also dry brushed around the on the paper just to really give it an antique look. Okay, and then I went around it with um, olive. And I put these over here. So I remember to put them in the list. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go around the outline of my butterfly and I can get her to lie flat. She's going to end up laying flat because she's going on the page. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Stabilo All and it's in black. And I'm just going to ever so, not a real thick line, just a real light line. I'm going to go through and I'm just going to outline her. And I'm going to do this all the way around. So let me do that and I'll be right back. Okay, I've completely traced around it with my Stabilo and it does kind of make that stand out a little bit more, but here's the fun thing about using a Stabilo. Um, and also you can get these um, at Dick Blick. Um, I have yet to find these. You can't get these in a Michaels or Joann's or a Hobby Lobby. They don't sell them. It is, you can get these kind of pencils out in a fine art store. If you're not able to get them, just use a black, um, a black uh, watercolor pencil, you know, um, from Crayola. But I do love this, and those will do the same things as this one will do. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my water brush, and I've got a very fine, fine, whoops, fine point on it. It's not real. It's not real, um, it's not real, real big. I'm just going to ever, I'm just going to lightly go along that black line. Because look, see what that does? It activates that Stabilo. I just want to be careful because I don't want it to be. too dark. But see how that, see what that does? That really makes that stand out. That's really so cool. I love it. Just enough that it gives it a nice outline. All right, I'm going to finish outlining this butterfly, and when I'm done, I'll be back. And there she is. Didn't she turn out beautiful? I love how that just highlights. See, and then I just squeeze my brush a little bit into here, and look, it's clean. That's what I love about my Stabilo. Okay, let me get the rest of the um, pieces that are, going to, that are going to go onto this page, and let's start laying them out to see how they look. I'll be right back. Okay, let me bring this down a little bit. Sorry. All right, so I know that I want her to go right about here. Straighten her out a little bit. She's going to go right about there. And then I have this branch. And this branch is going to go right about here. So I'm going to need to bring her down just a tad. Maybe move her over just a little bit. So what I think I'm going to do I think I want, I'm going to bring some flowers in, but I want to stamp first. So I have some of these that I've pulled. And again, like I said, I have just, flower, you know, st I just have stamps upon stamps. 
but this is all about nature. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these up here on my block. How I want these. Where do I want these? All right, well, you're going to go first. How's that? Let me set this up for a second here. This might be too. Actually, that might work out. I want it like that. Because then I'm going to go over. No, you know what I think I'm going to do? <laughs> See, that's why I like pulling out some different things, not everything being the same. Or I should say the same style. Not everything looks the same. All right, I'm going to stamp this all the way across the bottom here, and then I'm going to fill in with these. So let's see how that looks. And you know what? Through the rest of this process, it's really pretty self-explanatory. I'm probably going to go ahead and put this in fast motion, so that way you don't have to listen to me ramble on. So just so you know, uh, I am using my stays on in Timber Brown and I've got my acrylic block with some um, flowers on it and I'm just going to stamp and uh, I'll see you on the other side. Oh, and I'm also going to add some other flowers in here too. So spruce it all up. I'll see you on the other side.
Hey, friends. What do you think? I think it turned out beautiful. I think what I may do, though, let's see if I can find my brown Sharpie. These need centers. And they need to be brown. Let's take. Some of the glue's not completely dry. I just realized all the flowers had centers except this these. There we go. Now they'll stand out a little bit better. They needed centers. <clears throat> there we go. Let these dry a little bit. They're still a little wet. But here is my nature for my creative year, January 2019. And it's cold, cold, cold outside. So I thought, you know what? We need a little spring. We need some flowers and flutterbugs. So the um, the ribbon was from my stash. The flowers are off from my stash. And they were actually much brighter, but I dry brushed them with the um, Honey Brown by Deco Art. So that, um, that kind of dirtied them up a little bit and gave them some life. So all I have left to do is to sign and date it, and I'll get that done after we get off the, uh, after I'm done filming everything. And I clustered in two corners, kind of to draw it this way, but I love my Flutterbug. I think she turned out beautiful. And you know me, I'm all about Flutterbugs anyway. So enjoy this. I hope you enjoy it. I hope it encourages you to do something creative and to have some fun. And as always, the way I like to end all of my videos from the bottom of my heart, please be nice. It's really not that difficult. And I'll see you for my creative year next month. Bye everybody.